Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2 with our love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrega. Michelle, I love the title of today's subject. Well, hold on. Hold on. Uh, Hello, Michelle. Hello. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> Oh. oh, I was trying to get past the niceties real okay. fast, but yeah. no, okay. Yeah, okay. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> um, what I was referring to is the, the title of your ambersand, all that nasty, that nasty word, that, that. You mean that yuck, crap? Yuck, yuck. The crap. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yes. Okay. Crap. Putting up with crap. Why do people think that their spouse is putting up with too much crap from the relatives as opposed to themselves <laughs> themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the way we often, you know, our, our, you know, lizard brain thinks, right. They're pulling up with too much crap and that's the first sort of noticing, but often it's very complex, right? I mean, family dynamics can be very complex. So this is where I like to invite people to be curious. Before you say something that, like that out loud to your partner, you're putting up with too much crap, then I really, I want to step back, you know, and take a look at it. Okay. Good. You're saying recognize that it's not your problem? Well, recognize that, you know, first of all, who has the problem here? If I'm the one who's upset by what my partner's doing, then maybe something's going on over here. And that's something to look at first before we assume that they're doing something that we presume or we judge to be too much. And so that's what, I, you know, it's kind of a tangle, right? And so we're, we're talking generically in this, in this video. So I really invite people to look at the different parts of things that are going on here. So, you know, like I said, get curious, what exactly are your concerns here? And what feelings are you having about the situation? It seems there may be two parts of this thing. Okay, whether or not your partner is putting up with too much crap. Okay, it may or may not be true, but it bothers you. So how do you deal with either helping them, if that's really what the objective is, to no longer put up with that crap, or for you to be able to handle them dealing with it and, and get over it? Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah, so, it's, it's so it's part of the problem, the fact that we're not happy with the way our partner is dealing with their problem. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> why don't, why don't you stand up to your mother? That you know, that kind of thing. Why oh. she's pick, she's always bullying you. Why don't you stand up to the? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? As opposed to, really, I hate your mother. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes those are those are things that are deeper inside. Maybe it, it, it's not even just maybe about their mother, but our own feelings about our own mother, right? I mean, these different experiences that we've had often play into our reactivity to other situations that are happening in the present moment. So that's what I really invite people to look at is that oftentimes we're bringing our own baggage basically to our uh, um, response to other situations. Ah, so, very insightful. Yes, I got you. I got you. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So first we want to take stock before we even maybe bring up the subject with our partner. It's like, wow, what's really going on here? And, um, and what am I really upset about? And then, and then, you know, once you get a little clear about it, then maybe to bring it up and, and, and often it's good to just get curious with your partner. Um, gee, you know, I noticed that, you know, you, your mom calls often and, um, sometimes, you know, you interrupt our dinner or whatever. So it's like, what is the actual concern you're bringing up and to, and to talk about it. And remember you're on the same team, you know, you're a couple, you're on the same team and um, to look at it together. I have a feeling that a lot of these uh, situations don't end well. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that uh, in fact, if your partner is taking too much sleep, that's what you were the word you were looking for, John. Bleep. Right? Yeah, that's because, the word I was looking because for. Because we know how politically correct you are. Uh, bleeping. Yeah. Bleeping. <laughs> if they take too much bleep, and the fact of the matter may be that they indeed are taking too much, but is we are making it our problem. So I think that in most cases, their ability to change, particularly with the fact that their relatives maybe they've had for 30, 40, or 50 years is not going to be as easy 
as you either getting over it and just saying, ignore it, okay? Or uh, it's not going to turn out well if you just say, well, I can't handle this crap anymore, okay? I can't handle your uh, 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 linear selfie of you. So uh, how do these things tend to work out? Yeah, well, it's, it's it depends, right? So let's say that your partner is happy with the way they're handling their relatives. And that's something for, first of all, them to look at. You know, it's like, gee, am I joyfully responding when this person calls me? Um, am I willing and, and happy to loan them money in these situations? You know, whatever the circumstances may be. And that's the first step to decide if that partner is indeed, I'm good with it or not. So let's say they're good with it. Then it's up to you who's observing this to come to some agreement with your partner. Like, wow, like if obviously, you know, if it's a financial thing and it's, you know, your money too, then that's something you need to be having a conversation about, right? And to have some agreements about. Or if you're not feeling like you're getting the attention you need and want, um, then that's something else. Like, how can I get my needs met here? Or, gee, could we have some times uh, during our day where, you know, you're not, you don't, not willing to be interrupted. I mean, barring emergencies, of course. Um, so there's different ways to kind of negotiate how you want to handle these things. And the other way is, of course, if your partner is like, you know, you're white, I, I don't like this. Um, I don't know how to do it differently, you know? So then you can kind of, you know, brainstorm together. It's like, well, maybe next time somebody requests something from me, I'll say, I'm going to think about it. And then you take some time and you wait because we don't always have to say yes right away, right? So there are ways that we can support each other in kind of teasing out what actually feels uh, right for us in this situation. Boy, this really sounds yeah. like something that would be a heck of a lot better if they did with a third party like you sitting in the room. Because uh, yeah. this doesn't sound like a conversation that's going to turn out very well uh, of, of two un people who have otherwise not been handling this very well for years. Because obviously, if it's bothering me, I've been building up resentment over a while. It's not likely I've said anything for the first, let's say, 10 years. So, yeah. <laughs> so just bring well, it on uh, them yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, these are situations that do tend to linger on and fester. It's, yeah, that's true. And it is important to bring these things up and definitely bring it up in a way that like, wow, this is something that's bothering me. I don't, you know, help me help me understand, or is there a way you can support me in feeling better about how this goes, this dynamic that you have, and are you comfortable with it? You know, so it's kind of like, we're sort of remind, you know, continually reminding ourselves, you know, we're in this together and how can we, we support each other through it? But Art, I love what you said, because it's kind of like, if you know that this is not going to go well for yourself, that's a great awareness. Like, I know I need support with this. I know I need to get some help in talking to my partner about this. Great to know that about yourself because some things are really tricky. Or maybe you've tried this conversation before and it hasn't gone well in the past. So, what's what's the odds of getting your partner to change? I mean, people do change, but not often, in my experience. How do, I, and that's really what part of that's half the problem. Half the problem is why am I complaining about what he's doing? And the yeah. other half of the problem is, how do I get him to change to do what I want? <laughs> well, that, or how do I get myself to change so that I can be um, okay through what my partner does or doesn't do, let's uh, say. Yes. Yeah, right. So I would say with change, what you know, obviously we can't make someone else change unless they want to change, right? But if we share the impact it has on us, so, wow, you know, when you're willing to take phone calls from your family during dinner or, you know, during sex, I mean, who knows when, right? I mean, it's not, a, it really hurts my feelings and I feel uncomfortable. I don't feel like I'm a priority in your life. So you really, you're not trying to, you know, do some sob story. You're really, you know, if, if this is authentic, right? I'm not saying you make something up, but if you share how you are impacted by their behavior, that's the most, um, I would say in effective way to try to make some change happen. And then they can sit with like, Oh, I didn't realize that. Or, Oh, wow. So then I'm, and then the person is kind of caught between, wow, their relative and their partner. And, you know, so they have to look at, well, what am I willing to do differently here? And how can I, 
um, meet both these people's needs better? And, and what do I need to do for myself? You know, so it's kind of just um, it's softening the edges of like, oh, I want this and I want that. And to just be with, um, can we just look at it? It takes time, right? It's going to take time to kind of sort one of these uh, challenges, you know, into a, a smoother place to rest. All good advice. Yeah, well, I think I think the really underlying thing here is that it festered. Fester, I think, is a, an operative word here. That um, uh, your partner is likely to resent you even bringing it up. Even so, in other words, if it's something that doesn't absolutely affect you, okay, then you might want to. Well, that's probably why most of us tolerate it. We tolerate it because we don't want to confront the issue. Sure. Uh, so. Um, yeah, the partner doesn't want to confront the issue, and you don't want to confront the issue with your partner. So this is another good reason for people to go visit uh, you or uh, somebody like you and have them maybe act as the intermediary uh, so that it's not me versus you, but but right. us, us get, uh, seeking advice from a neutral third party. Yeah, and to really help you orient as a team, because if you come together and look at a situation together, you're way more likely to find something that's going to work for everybody, including the, the relative, right? I mean, you don't want to, you know, alienate them from their relatives. So it's, yeah, it, just how to hold it in a more um, compassionate way for everybody. Okay. Well, uh, Good advice. Uh, I think uh, we've now uh, poked the bear. On another uh, thing that um, as I, people will either at least recognize, okay, it really is a problem, and it probably is my problem as much as their problem, and do I want to deal with it? And if I do, uh, maybe I should go get some help from <clears throat> Michelle Fabrica, uh, because uh, doing it on my own may not work out so well. But anyway, it's a real mm. problem, and thank you for discussing things that maybe some people can take care of on their own. Yeah, and it's it's great. I mean, solutions are possible, right? It really is amazing to to widen the lens and see how things can be resolved. So, um, yeah, there's always hope. Good. There is. Great. Thank you, Michelle. We look forward to talking to you next time. Sounds great. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.